hello guys welcome back to my channel as you all know season 7 is out so i've been playing uh, quite a lot and i would like to share with you a few tips that i think they will help you to improve your game they will help you to improve your results and i think overall they will make you enjoy the game more than you do I've just chosen a few in-game examples that we're gonna have a look at and that I think they will help you to understand better different situations that you will come across in the game. So yeah, just before jumping into the video, I would like to ask you that if you do enjoy the video, please do like it. And if you want to support my channel, please do subscribe to it. I'm gonna be uploading more videos in the future. So your support it's will show long. basically the feedback that I'm gonna receive on the videos. Yeah, and I will know if the video is actually helping somebody or if not, I will just need to adjust it more so everybody yes, can benefit go. from it. Oh, okay, so this is a 3v2 situation as uh, we managed to knock one of the other guy's team. And what I'm doing here, I'm trying to push even if my health is not that great. I missed a few shots but in the end I managed to knock one of the guys. Even here I missed another shot, I'm going down but in the end uh, my team will win the fight so that's all about uh, team play so I would say just be aggressive at times but not overdo it like in this example there was no audio so I pushed so much that I was so close to them obviously I had to back down to heal myself so because of the audio no I didn't realize that there's a team there One of the enemies decided to push, that was a bad move from them. And now we have the advantage again, we are 3v2, so obviously we have to push, but we still have to push as a team. Because even if it's 3v2, you can easily get uh, eliminated. But yeah, it gives you an advantage over the other team. Down to target. Give me a sec, recharging shields. There's something wrong with audio on this side. Because I didn't hear nothing. Here we've been pushed by two different squads, so uh, somebody is pushing us right now. What I'm doing here again is being aggressive. I crack the shield of that raid, so I'm just gonna push her down as well. Reloading. Now that she's down, it's 1v1, me against the lifeline, and uh, she's quite cracked, I think. And I push her successfully, and now I can revive my teammates. As I said earlier, there were two teams, and I'm trying to get the banner of one of my guys. The thing is, with the season 7, the damage that you receive on the second circle is not that great like before i'm just trying to get the banner thinking that i can actually respawn my teammate i'm doing this because i have a few syringes on me because i'm a rate as well so i can phase it out a little bit i understand that the damage is not that bad if they didn't change the damage on the circle probably i would have oh, left my teammate behind otherwise i would have died to the circle so this is another thing to know in apex legends season 7 that the second circle damage is not that bad as previous seasons. Patching myself up. Phasing. Yeah, because they decrease the um, the damage that you take. I don't have shields. Here is a 2v2 situation, but the thing is, I'm still 
outside the circle. I have no shields and my teammate is 2v1 there and now I'm going to help him. Uh, 1v1 with another raid. Luckily enough, I think I got her there. One second, we got this. I'm down. That was the last one. Nice work. Thank you. Last members down. One squad. Here is the same game. We got left with another team. We had a high ground. They were pushing from outside the circle. So this was the major error uh, that we did here. We let them come close to us. They're basically underneath us, so we cannot push because we can guys smash in a second. So this was a very very bad. Uh, play from us we should have just stuck on one side altogether and just at least knock one while they were trying to move inside the circle here what I did I just stayed Ish. on the top I got shot from the left I got shot from the front and I got knocked and unfortunately this is my mistake and this is what led to us to lose the game the thing is when you're left with only one team when you're left against one team, and it's 3v3 especially, try to stick as close as possible to your teammates, communicate, and once you knock one of the other guys, you should all push together. And mostly, uh, when you're 3v3, try to communicate to go for one enemy all together, if you can just shoot at one enemy, so that you can get rid of one, and then it would be a 3v2 situation, so it would be much more easier to win the game. As you know from season 6, Apex introduced the crafting system. So I would really recommend you to use this crafting system. You can get some good attachments for your weapons, like I do in this video. Got an Evo shield here, level 2. I need it. For example, I'm going for a skull piercer here for my wingman, and I think that's actually powerful just to get your attachments from a machine. What can it be more easier than that? Like it or not, Apex introduced the trident in season 7. For me, it looks like a bit like Fortnite style, and I used to play a little bit of Fortnite before but I, I don't really like it, it's a bit too futuristic for me, too animated and now with this trident I honestly don't like it but it's just in the game so you can just move faster throughout the map you, you can be the circle if you want, you can do third parties uh, by just taking the trident and moving quicker like we did in this example so yeah it's there so I really suggest you to use it as you can see here we gonna win the second fight with another team so I think it, it is useful I guess I don't know how many people talk about this actually but I think one of the most items that you should carry in your backpack should be grenades, arc stars and thermite grenades. Just look at this video, it's 3v3, yeah, one grenade out, second grenade out, the guy is out, that's it. Now with 3v2 it's so easy, yet so powerful that the grenades are just destructive. They're so strong and we just destroyed these guys just by throwing a grenade first. No, no, I all no. the time carry grenades. This I think they're the most so powerful out of hit. all three. Oh, enemy here. Thank you, thank you. Whole squad's down. This won't hurt. Hold on. <laughs> How that guy jumped. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, to be honest with you guys, uh, this new map, Olympus, for okay. me, is just amazing. I think they did a good job this uh, season, Apex Legends. Uh, I don't really miss the previous two maps. As I said, I really like this map. So I've been landing two different places. For me personally, I, I like to jump in around maximum three places all the time, at least if I'm the jump master. It's easier to get used with the map if you land in the same spot, you will learn, I don't know, the building structure, you know, the hiding places or where to heal, when to heal and all this stuff. 
for me I really like Oasis, Bonsai Plaza and I really like the Rift as well. However there's some other places where you can find good loot but for me personally I got used with these three places and that's where I usually land if I'm the jump master. As I said previously in uh, season 6 high ground is essential when you're fighting other teams. I think statistically speaking whoever gets the high ground has more chances of winning the fight. The reason is because you can see everything from above. You can see what's going on around you. You have time to heal, you have time Coming to shield to up. If an enemy wants to push you, it will take quite a while for them to climb up to you. So I think high ground, even when you actually fighting somebody, like when you shooting somebody, it's much easier to aim and shoot below you than above you. Like look, look at this example. I just cracked that guy completely, and I, I lost my shield indeed. But still. Some traps, please. Traps. If you got some traps. Another tip that I will give to you and I didn't mention in my season 6 tips I would say it's decision making this comes as a natural instinct uh, it's not something that you will actually learn it's just something that you have naturally so obviously the more you play the more it will develop for you Decision making is not easy, you have to analyze the entire situation. For example, here there's three squads left, I picked up the banners but there's no respawn beacon. So I'm like what the hell, I'm going to fight, see what happens, uh, I can't revive my teammates. So I pushed these two other squads, luckily it was 1v1v1. So I managed to get the win. Decision making can definitely win you games. So sometimes it's inspiration, sometimes it's instinct, it's not easy, sometimes you will screw it up with your decisions and it's just how it is so obviously this is Apex Legends so if somebody would have named this game third party uh, they wouldn't be wrong at all. Most of the time I would say just push th as a third party, I wouldn't say push as soon as you hear the, uh, the other two teams fighting. Just wait a little bit, more, more, more. let them, I don't know, knock themselves a little bit or just to hit hard on themselves and then just push and get the easy kills. It seems that is not fair and it seems that is cheeky and sneaky and probably it is. But at the end of the day, it's about the last standing squad. You didn't do nothing to cheat the game team or something behind, like this. Behind. I would really recommend you to do third parties all the time. I would say always get a good angle on your enemies here with Pathfinder which I don't really play but somebody picked up my character here so just get a good angle on your enemies surprise them as I did in this clip probably they expected our whole team to be just behind these boxes but I came from the side I managed to knock one and then help my teammate to eliminate the other one try to work out on better angles over your enemies 
that will uh, definitely win you fights. When possible, you should recover your teammates' banners or revive them. But I've seen so many times that players are going for the banners or they're going to revive their teammates when it's not the case. I know it's a bit frustrating for them not to be in the game anymore. But what can you do? If, if you go there and you're just gonna die, then what's the point? I mean, it's not about being greedy or selfish. It's about staying alive in the end. Obviously, if you have a good chance and you don't revive them, then of course, but when it's not the case, just leave the banners behind. If they say something is their problem, you just use your judgment to stay alive in the game. Um, it's not about points, it's not about points as well, because I don't play for points, but it's just about the last standing squad. Reloading. Double time in it. Giving him the chimney. Taking a knee. Catching up. 